Hey, you're back, so am I. Hmm? Hello, I'm the Zill player. That's nice to be up. I hope you're enjoying the stream. And I'm really enjoying reading this book. How Zoll Made Friends by Jared Stanton. Dear Vida, you are all of these things. One, beautiful. Two, strong. Three, smart. Four, free. Five, a great person. If people who don't love you for who you are, that's okay. Aww, that's a beautiful message. I'm just going to say that that's the message before all already. But we better read the book fast before we just say that's the message. New school, no friends. This is going to be awful, so thought to herself. Summer was slowly dying and so was her joy. Moving away from all her friends to a new place was the worst thing since the worst thing ever. Her face was red and she was so stressed that she didn't know what to do. Dark graders were savages at other schools, which is what her friends told her. She had a flashback of what one of her best friends, Quinn, telling her all about new schools. They're savages, so you should think about running away. Dark graders are like second graders, but even more terrible. So remembered what it was like when she first started school. It was rough because of her skin condition. So, real name, Eliza Helen Jones, had riddled her would make her look like she had two different skin tones. Huh. The center of her face was white with the rest brown. She looked like a polka dot. She looked like a polka dotted princess from her head to her toes. So had a head full of curly jet black hair with a sunny smile. Making friends was hard in the beginning because she looked so different from all other kids. Some kids made fun of her, but most of them just said nothing at all. They just tried to stay away. Like any child, some of them thought she was contagious. The other the way other kids looked at her didn't make her feel so good, so she was always ready to go home. Quinn, her best friend, was the first person to talk to her out of all the other kids, which took a little while. Whenever they made eye contact, Quinn always looked like she wanted to say something, but never did. She had other friends. Quinn was chocolate like a Reese's cup. Oh. Yum. Zoe's favorite chocolate. She had a naturally short afro like her mother, Mrs. Lysley. After everyone saw her and Quinn became friend Quinn become friends, they actually tried to get to know her. They all found out how nice and fun she was to play with. From that time in kindergarten until now, so didn't have to worry about having friends. Eliza was all well, Eliza was worried all over again because she knew how mean other students could be, and she was scared. Zoe was beautiful, and she knew it to be true. Whenever she didn't feel like she was normal, she would read her favorite book, Motivational Maggie by Jared Stanton. Ha! Huh. <laughs> Credits! <laughs> Credits in the book. My Jared Stanton. Her favorite part is when Maggie says, every single one of you is beautiful just the way you are. Those words always made her smile. Her parents and brother told her she was special on the good days as well as the bad. They called her dough because her skin looked like cookie dough ice cream. Ugh. I'm loving this. I'm loving the book because of her favorite um, can, because of her favorite ice cream and chocolate. 
She wished everyone was like her family. The last weekend, the last weekend of the summer was coming to an end on a Sunday night, and Zoe wanted to talk to her mama before she went to bed. Zoe went into the laundry room where her mother was folding clothes. Hey, mama, Zoe said softly. Hey, do you need something, baby? Her mother replied with a smile. Mrs. Jones was brown, with chubby cheeks and a little nose. Zoe looked like her in the face. She wore long straight hair that touched her shoulders. Zoe started to tear up a little as she said, "Mama, I don't want to go to school tomorrow. I just know it's gonna. I just know it's gonna be bad." Could you please increase the size? Oh, I forgot us. One sec. Why do you think it's gonna be bad? Her mother asked family. You know why? Them kids gonna make fun of me because of how I look. You know they're gonna say I'm beautiful. I know you're gonna say I'm beautiful, and I know I'm beautiful. Those other kids aren't gonna think so. It took a long time for the kids back home to even like me. If it wasn't for Quinn, kindergarten and first grade and second grade would have been. If it wasn't for Quinn, kindergarten, first grade, and second grade would have been terrible. So this new school is going to be what you make it. It don't matter what other people think about you. It's how you feel about yourself. If you know you are beautiful and that you are a good person, be who you are. Nobody is better than you, and it isn't about how you look. It's about what kind of person you are. So it's all about how you carry yourself. Go in there and be confident. Either they're gonna come around and like you, or they're not. It really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the people who love you and that you love yourself. You're beautiful, funny, smart, and free. Anyone would be a fool not to love you. You sure? So asked, holding back a grin. Yes, I'm sure, and you know I'm right. Always make the right kind of friends. You should rather have one or、uh, two real friends than a bunch of bad ones. Her mama replied with a laugh. Okay, mama, that made me feel better. So turned around and walked to her room, smiling and thinking to herself, "You should rather have one or two real friends than a bunch of bad ones." She walked to the bathroom to get ready for bed. Her parents taught her to brush her teeth and stay clean. Zoe put her PJs on and climbed the climbed the steps to her tall bed. She called her queen-size bed the cloud. It was so soft and white. Getting up in the morning was always the worst part of the day, as she could hear her bed and pillow say, "No, don't leave. Lay back down, so we'll miss you." Eliza said her prayers, but stopped herself from getting in bed to go to her brother Celine's room. She walked in, and he was looking at something called the Promising Daydreamers Associating Association on his computer. She walked up beside his chair, beside his chair, and tapped his leg. Celine, she said. He answered, looking down with a smile. Hey, my doll, what's up? Celine, um, Herbert Jones Jr. was thirteen years old, with chocolate skin, tall, with a low haircut. Celine had light brown, glossy eyes, like so did. They both had. They both had contagious smiles and laughs. Zoe went on to say, "Do you think it's gonna be hard to make friends?" He responded with a curious look. "No, I don't think it's gonna be hard at all. One of the best people I know. You know, you're one of the best people I know."
Why? So asked. Because you're special. Everything about you from your polka dots to your laugh is something beautiful. Even if I wasn't your brother, we could still be best friends. I know you're scared, but you're not on your own. I'm starting at a new school too, and we're both gonna do great on our new place. What if nobody likes you? It's good to have friends at school, but we go to school to learn and get smarter. If nobody likes me, that's okay, because I know that I have people that love me. You know who told me that? Nah. -uh. So said, looking at her brother in the eyes, Zila or Marva Jones told me that. Himself told him that. You don't have to worry about you have nothing to worry about as long as you stay true to yourself. Always remember that to stay true to yourself and you'll be fine. Okay, old Marva, she laughed, feeling good at sight. Nobody called him by his middle name but her. He hated for her to call him that in front of people or if he was having a bad day. Go get some sleep, Zojo, he laughed. He said back as he laughed. So hated that. You either called her Zoe or Doe. Never both. They exchanged I love news and so walked back to her room. She climbed into her cloud and went to sleep. This is no picture book. Yep, not a picture book. But hey, it's pretty nice. Next morning, Zilin came in and woke Zoe from her dream about getting on an airplane. She wanted to travel around the world when she got older. She laughed as she rubbed her eyes because he always tickled her until she woke up. I was dreaming about flying. You could have gave me five more minutes for the plane to take off, Zoe said with a grin. Her brother chimed back, but I was having my favorite dream too when I got up. So get ready, polka dot. Daddy's gonna take us to school until we find out our bus number. Okay, Ola Marva. Okay, Ola Marva, she shouted. She knew he would tickle her again. She was right, and she laughed until she snorted. Zeeland left the room to finish getting ready while she did the same. Zoe was oh so nervous, but that was okay. She walked down the steps stretching. She walked in the bathroom to get ready. She smelled breakfast. The smell told her that her daddy was baking the pancake she loved so much. Their old school didn't have uniforms, which they loved, but which they loved, but now had to wear them. But Dungy Scott's with with khakis and black or white shoes was the dress code. Zoe stood in her mirror in her clothes and was groaning trying to make a decision. She loved to wear dresses but she didn't know. Mm, I don't want them to see my legs. When... She was about to change, she remembered that she should stay true to herself. Jo picked her head up and walked out into the kitchen with her pink backpack. Zeelin walked in shortly after her. Her dad turned around with two plates in his hand. Good morning, girl ready for a fresh start, he said. Mr. Jones was the same skin tone as Xelan Jr. with a moustache and deep voice. Her dad was like a mountain man since he was so big. Eliza and Xelan shared a look before telling him they were ready. After they all enjoyed breakfast, they headed out. Their mother had found a job that she had to get up fairly early for. Zoe was sure she had given her a kiss on the forehead before she left. The three of them got into the car and went to Xelan's new middle school fast since it was closer.
The car was like a concert with the three of them singing tomorrow in harmony. Together in harmony. Mr. Jones turned to Lenny Williams' song, Cause I Love You, and they sang their hearts out. <laughs> Their daddy always knew how to pick their spirits up before something big. They pulled up at Zealand's school where he got out. He smiled at his dad and sister. So let down her window before he walked away. Love you, Amara. Good luck, she told him with a smile. He told her to be true to herself. He told her to be herself and he walked away. So when her daddy drove to high school, she had gotten quiet, just hoping her brother was okay. Her daddy told her that he knew that she was nervous, but her skin had nothing to do with people liking her. If someone doesn't like you because of how you look, that's their problem, not yours. He said. She nodded at his words. They arrived at Rosemary Elementary School soon after. So took a deep breath before she exited the car. She took her father's hand before they walked into the school. Everything was different compared to what she was used to. Please read louder. Okay, Ankvala. How long you want to wait? Should I do the same on YouTube? Sure, if you want to. I like it. Me too. She took her father's hand before they walked into the school. Everything was different compared to what she was used to. The school looks really up. They walked into the office as Zoe's eyes danced all over the place. There were parents everywhere, which meant there were a lot of kids too. Be confident. Be confident. Some of the kids looked at her fun, but Zoe told herself it was going to be fine. After about 45 minutes, they finally reached the front of the line. There was a pretty dark lady with short haircut and a warm smile. So thought she was gorgeous, but she shyly hid behind her dad's leg. Good morning, sir. Can I help you? She said with a calm smile. Yes, ma'am. He pulled Zoe in front of him and continued. We misregistered due to us moving and I wanted to enroll her today. Okay, I got you. Well, as you can see, I'm the front office lady. My name is Mrs. Johnson. What's your name, sweet pea? Zoe took a deep breath and then she answered, My name is Eliza Jones. You can call me Zoe or Doe, never both. Mrs. Johnson returned a laugh and nodded her head. Well, Zoe and Mr. Zoe, I'll send you all to the library with a form to fill out. Welcome to Rosemary, baby. Have a good day. She pointed them in the direction of the library and called for the next in line. Zoe told her daddy that she liked that lady and how pretty she was. The two of them went into the library, found a table, and sat down before a man approached him. He was short with a tie and with a short and tie, a light skinned guy with a beard and low haircut like her father. How are y'all doing today? He asked nicely, his voice not as deep as her father's. What's going on, my man? Nothing much. Just trying to get my baby in here. How are you? Her daddy responded with a smile. The man reached out to shake his hand and told Mr. Jones that he was good, and he put his hand toward, out towards Zoe to shake her hand, but she just looked at her daddy. The stranger laughed before saying, I'm sorry, I'm Mr. Wilkins, a second grade teacher here, and you are? I'm Eliza Jones and I'm in third grade. My daddy told me not to talk to strangers. Well, he's teaching you right, said Mr. Wilkins. Strangers can be really dangerous. How's this school, Mr. Wilkins? Mr. Jones asked with his head tilted. Well, I've been here for four years and I've loved every minute of it. All of these teachers here are about the kids and not just getting paid. Mr. Jones nodded and Mr. Wilkins said it was nice to meet them but before he walked 
hidden away. So his dad filled out a form and handed it. About ten minutes went by before the library called them forward. They found out Zoe was going to be in Mrs. Parker's class and get on the bus. Two hundred one seven. Check your VR. Okay. I will. Hey, hope you're well. I got you tapped while I play. Thanks. I hope you enjoy this stream. Or at least <laughs> what you um can see of it. Well, right now we are reading a book with a girl named so in it how so made friends <laughs> about 10 minutes went by before the librarian called them forward they found out Zoe was going to be in mrs parker's class and get on bus 20107 to get home when all of the paperwork was done so walked to her class holding hands with her dad the nerves were setting in with every step, she got more and more scared. Would they hate her? Would they not even speak to her? Would they pick on her? She just didn't know. Every step got heavier, but she kept moving on. She would have walked around that school all day. She was dreading when they... When they would stop at the door, then it came, and bold black letters on a colourful door was Mrs. Parker's name. Mr. Jones kneeled in, uh, kneeled in front of a panicking so and kissed her on the forehead. Remember what I said, so go in there and be yourself. Do your schoolwork and don't worry about what anyone thinks. You're beautiful, and we both know that. Okay. So nodded with a smile, and they did their secret handshake. So opened the door and walked in to all eyes on her. She had a paper in her hand that she handed to Mrs. Parker. The door was still open, so she looked back at her dad, who was smiling. He waved by and blew her a kiss. She caught it and put it in her pocket. The room was quiet while Mrs. Parker read the paper she had been handed. So looked across the room where kids were just looking at her and talking to each other. She started playing with her fingers, which she always did when she was nervous. Her, uh, her tics. In the next minute, that felt like forever, Mrs. Parker finally spoke. She was tall, brown, with long hair and glasses. All right, everybody, this is Eliza Jones, and she's new in this area and to this school. Is there a neck you go by, baby? Zoe hesitated at first and took a breath. I just so oh, Joe, never bowed. One of the kids shouted out, Why do people call you Joe? So started to groan and panic a little. I knew they would think I was contagious. Mrs. Parker interrupted and sent Joe to an open chair while she found her a class folder and a pouch on the wall. So stand in the middle row to the far left of the classroom in her desk. She heard a boy do a bad job of whispering. I'm telling you, man, she's sick. I've seen that on TV. You better not let her touch you. It hurt her feelings and she was already in the mood to go home. Mrs. Parker called for everyone's attention again to ask Zoe so another question. It's like they're looking right through me. Oh, this is worse than they thought. Mrs. Parker cut into her thoughts. Tell us about yourself, So, What do you like? And Zoe paused for a second, trying to think of what she liked. Well, I like to dance. I've been doing ballet since I was kindergarten. I like to draw, sing, even though I'm not good at it. I think it's funny. I like board games, playing sports, and doing crossword puzzles. I think eating is fun. I love food. I love reading because my daddy says it makes you smarter. Hmm, I don't know what else, but that's it. 
Zoe took another look around the room and most of them looked more interesting than they had been before. Some of them even smiled at her. She heard a girl not too far away say, Well, I think she's pretty. Mrs. Parker chimed in. So, you're a real catch. We might have drank together. So laughed and she nodded at her words. The rest of the class introduced themselves and the girl that said she was pretty was named Neela. Oh, okay, thank you. Pepper, Ducky, Nona. I feel like, um, like how Quinn was the first to like become friends with her at her old school. I think Neela is going to be the first to make friends with Zoe in this school. She wore braids with big lips and a dark skin. When P.E. came for their grade, Zoe didn't know what to expect. It didn't seem like all of them didn't want to be her friend. They got released out into the gym and the kids scattered. The girls went one way, the boys another. After thinking for a second, Zoe wanted to play basketball. Like the movies, they crowded around the team captains so they could be picked. She stood there hoping she would get picked so she could show them how good she was. She played with her brother Xelin all the time. Nobody picked her, but she told herself that was okay. She was a little disappointed, so she grabbed a mat to do her ballet. Stretches that always made her feel better. She had an idea anyway, so she went directly to the side. A few minutes after... A few minutes of the game went by and she was watching closely. Most of the girls were walking laps around the court, talking to one another and watching her stretch. The ball bounced in her direction while she was doing a toe touch and one of the boys asked her to throw the ball back. So grabbed up, so stood up, grabbed the ball and tripled it until she got to the three point line. She shot the ball like she landed at home. It hit nothing but they just stared at her while she turned around to stretch once more. She tried to hide her grin. I bet they pick me next time. When I pulled up, they was like, oh, and it went in as they were like, ah. A few minutes later, Neela approached her while she was doing a hip stretch. Hey, I know you're new here and kids have been looking at you funny, Neela said blankly. Zoe stood up and looked in her eyes. Neela continued, I still think you're pretty and you seem nice. Why your skin look like that if you why your skin look like that if you don't mind me asking? I got riddled, so she stuck out her arms and moved her fingers as she continued. It's just something that makes me lose colour in some spots, that's all. Neela looked interested. Oh, okay. I was curious. She turned around as if she was going to walk away and yell loud. I told y'all she had a disease. Y'all better watch out. Zoe was so shocked that she couldn't panic. Neela seemed so nice. A group of girls. Okay. As if she... As if she was... Okay. A group of girls laughed while the majority of them stared at her. Tears rolled down Zoe's face and she remembered one of her daddy's kisses in her pocket. She took it out and placed it on her cheek and sat down for the rest of the year. Zoe was ready to get back to class so she could try to go home. Today was too much already and it had only been a couple of hours. When the class returned to the classroom, Zoe reached in her book bag and grabbed her small phone. Her parents got her phone that she could only call out to them and her brother on. She raised her hand for the bathroom before closing her arms to hide the phone under her armpit. Zoe held her tears back until she made it into an empty stall. 
She called her daddy's work number quickly. He wouldn't be able to answer his cell phone because he gets really busy. Hey, Apple Pink, how are you doing? Let's share the stream. Watching your stream, best streamer. Thank you all. Do you like jets? Well, yeah, I like um, airplanes, so. Let's see you. He wouldn't be able to answer his cell phone because he gets really busy. Her daddy ran a youth organization that specialized in guiding kids from kindergarten to ninth grade. Zoe knew his secretary, secretary. and Tina Smalls was going to answer. She moved as well to keep working for her dad. Hello, Mr. Jones. Hello, Mr. Jones's office. How can I help you? She said happily. Zoe was crying. Mrs. Nita, can I talk to my daddy, please? And Nita heard the crying and sniffing. Zoe, what's the matter, baby? I'll transfer you to your daddy. And pieces, Zoe replied. I want to go home, Mrs. Nita. I don't like it here. Mrs. Nita told her to hold on while she pushed her through her father. Seconds later, he picked up in a hurry. So, what's the matter? He said in almost a panic. Crying and panting, she answered. I, they all think I got a contagious disease and they act like something gonna happen if they get next to me. They're just not good people, Daddy. Please come get me. Her father replied. I'm coming, though. We will talk when I get there. Zoe hung up the phone and walked back to her class as she wiped her tears. Aww. Relief rushed through her knowing her daddy was on the way. She folded her arms before walking back into the classroom and to her desk. The other kids just stared as some of them snickered with unfriendly grins. Mrs. Parker was splitting them into groups when Zoe walked in. They were about to do a math game. She split them into five teams of five. On Eliza's team was Tristan, Mosey, Mia, Neela, and herself. Neela made her extremely uncomfortable after what she had done to her early at Neela. What's up? Nothing much, but we're reading the book called How So Made Friends. Can't wait to know the ending. Me either. The energy in Zoe's group was so unhealthy because she didn't feel welcome. Feeling unwelcome made her feel sick to her tummy. Mrs. Parker wrote to one multiplication problem for each group to walk up to the whiteboard to solve. One of um, every team would walk up and answer for that team. Zoe's team was four. Alright guys, this game is to see how much you know before we really get into learning times tables. Some of you may know and some of you may not. That's okay. I want to see where everyone is. Chatter started to fill the room as the worry set in on some of the kids' faces. Zoe could see it in their eyes, but it didn't make her feel better. She was ready to go home. The game began and Neela was the first from their group to go onto the whiteboard. Her problem was three times four. Ah, twelve. Leela walked to the board along with four others to figure out their answers while their groups looked on. TJ from one group solved his problem before the other four didn't sat down. He was a light-skinned kid with glasses and low hair. He kind of looked smart, I suppose, so thought to herself. Moments later, Mercy from group 3 answered 3 times 7 by writing a bunch of X's to count. Huh. Zoe thought Macy was very pretty with her brown skin and jet black straight hair. Another kid has answered, but Zoe hadn't remembered his name. His answer was wrong though. The other girl didn't answer, 
and Nila was hesitating with three times four. They had only been up there for a couple of minutes, but it seemed like forever. She answered it correctly finally and came back to the group. I could have been an I could have been answered if I wanted to, she said. She After a couple of rounds, Eliza never moved and her team was losing. Neela spoke up. Mrs. Parker, why is she not doing any problems? That ain't fair. The problems had noticeably got harder for them. Mrs. Parker called Zoe up for the next one to solve eight times nine. She moved slowly towards the board, her anxiety going through the roof. She didn't care about the problem. She just hated that everyone was looking at her. At her after what had happened, Liza was hoping her name would be called over the intercom right at that second. When she made it to the whiteboard, she stared at the problem while she thought of that, but she landed at home. Her mother had made a chart. Her mother had made a chart that she practiced. So answered her question before the rest and sighed a breath of relief that she could sit down. A couple of them just stared at her and whispered. The next round, Neela was back up again, but with nine times seven, but she had been on a roll with the right answers. She wrote in her answer with confidence, but before she turned her round, so blurted, that's not right. Neela quickly shouted back, yes it is. The intercom interrupted the classroom as a woman called in. Mrs. Park, I need Eliza Jones for early dismissal. So smiled herself and said, Finally, my daddy's got here. She got her things while the other kids watched. While she walked to the door, she faced Neela and said, The answer is 63, not 57. Surprised, the classroom pushed a wave of oohs. Neela got hot. You don't know what you're talking about. As she turned to Mrs. Parker, as she, as she continued, It's 57, right? With a comforting tone of Mrs. Parker. With a comforting tone, Mrs. Parker told her that 57 was not the answer, but she did great. The answer is 63, she said. She finished. Zoe said goodbye to Mrs. Parker and walked out leaving the class in a frenzy of laughter. Being out there felt fairly relaxing to Eliza and got better with every step she took to the office. She remembered how to get there. The sight of her daddy was a fresh breath of air. She ran and hugged him tightly. She cried in his arms because she was having a hard day. Aww. She took her daddy's hand as they walked out of the school. When they got into the car, she exploded before her father could ask what happened. I don't like it here at all. They all think I have a touchy disease and don't want to come near me or even talk to me like they'll catch what I got. It's been a terrible day of being laughed at and stared at like I'm an alien or something. You're gonna say I'm beautiful, but nobody really thinks so except you. Except you, Mama, and old Mama. Her father took in everything she said for a moment before he said anything. Fast things, fast. Wipe your eyes and stop crying. Deep breaths like we practice. In through your nose and out of your mouth. No matter where you are, peace is in you. Always remember to breathe when you are upset. It doesn't help a lot of your time, but it takes some of the stress off. Zoe listened to her father and followed his words with, his, with her eyes closed. He continued, Zoe, most things think that something they ain't never seen before is weird. The first time you saw broccoli, you asked why they were trying to make you eat little trees. You hated the smell and didn't want to look at it until you gave it a try. School is no different. Your last school treated you like the last school treated you like you treated broccoli until they gave you a try. It's never easy to be different, but it's beautiful to stand out. 
give it time. I can't come get you every day. You know what to do. She opened her eyes and looked at him with glossy eyes. She opened her eyes and looked up at him with glossy eyes. I have to be myself. Not everybody is going to like me, and that's okay. They have to like me for me. Yep. He nodded his. Uh, he nodded his head in agreement, and as he pulled away towards home, they turned on some good music and went to get ice cream. When they got home, Zo grabbed her mat from the bedroom that she practiced on. She used it for ballet stretches, breathing exercises, and whatever else a little girl would do with a mat. After she changed out of her clothes, Zo walked into the living room where her dad was sitting on his own mat. Both of them sat comfortably with their hands rested on their thighs. Ten minutes, though. Read steady and focus on it. Eliza had been doing what her family calls a zen since she was six years old. She is eight years old now. When the ten minutes was over, Xelan walked in the door to them sitting on the floor. Hey, old Mara, so said. She was trying to see if he was okay. If he wasn't, he would say, don't call me that. He replied, what's up, Joe? Rough day? She nodded her head yes and asked him about his day. He told her that it was good. He had just, he just had to get used to the things they do around where they live now. Xilin greeted their father with a handshake. Those kids were awful at school today. I had to get out of there. So said with an exhale. I'm sure Pop's already talked to you about the other kids, so I won't say anything about it. You'll have a better day tomorrow. If not tomorrow, just keep being you and that'll take you far. I'll love you before it's over. Zoe smiled at him as her mother walked in with pizza in her hand to celebrate their first day of school. Oh my god, thank you so much, Red Tag, for following. We really appreciate it. We hope you enjoy the stream. With a wide smile, her mother spoke to them all and hugged them. Everyone talked about that day with Zoe having the most interesting one. Her mother reminded her of what she told her about friends. She should rather have one or two real friends than a bunch of bad ones. So when her brother went to their rooms after getting ready to go to bed. I've had a long day today, she thought to herself as she stretched out in her cloud. If I don't remember to breathe, I won't make it to be a hard day tomorrow. If I'll forget... If I forget, I'll just call my mama since I called my daddy today. Got my backup plan. The next morning, Zoe got up from the morning shake of her Zealand. The two shared a smile and he told her today was a near one. She climbed out of the bed to pick what she would wear. Mm, maybe I'm going to wear pants today, I think. She got dressed, went in the bathroom, and brushed her teeth. Before she walked out of the bathroom, she remembered she didn't wash her face. Uh. My book is a nasty, she laughed. Xilin called after her while he waited at the door. So grabbed her book bag and shot to the door. The bus stop was two blocks away from home. On that walk, Xilin saw Eliza practicing her breathing. More nervous today, huh? He said. Yeah, if you were 
If you was me yesterday, you would be in a coma or something. Talk about it is hard when you look like me. She replied with a serious look. So you're a beautiful little girl, and even if you want, looks ain't everything. You're a good person, right? I think so, she answered. You're nice to people and try to do the right thing, right? Yeah, and you treat everybody the same, right or wrong. You're right, she replied with a little confidence. He hadn't asked her anything else as they arrived. As they had just arrived at the bus stop, her brother had made her think as the bus pulled up for them to climb on. She spent a whole ride back trying to practice being strong and not crying when things were going bad. She didn't even know what to prepare for. But she was going to be ready. I'm smart, I'm funny, I'm beautiful, she told herself, since she knew what to be true. Once the bus made it to her school, she was a little scared to get up. Xilin was her last line of comfort before heading back into the jungle. He reminded her to stay true to herself and to be strong. She gave him a hug, left the bus, and took a deep breath with her eyes closed. Interesting story. Yeah. I need to know something. Okay. Four. Since the school served breakfast, so and her brother didn't have to get up earlier. When she walked into the cafeteria, she looked around as kids from kindergarten to fifth grade were moving all around the room. Zoe walked around to get in line where she made eye contact with Neela, who was kinda far in front of her in line. They stared at each other for a moment, and Zoe wasn't scared of her. Never be scared of anyone, she remembered what her parents told her. Line was moving quickly and Zoe was hungry. When a boy skipped in front of her, shoving her back, don't be scared. Get out of my way, I was in front of you, Zoe said to him. He turned around trying to look intimidating. Now shut up, I was right here already, he replied to her. No you wasn't, Zoe said back as she got beside him and pushed herself back into her spot. He pulled her shell which made her angry so she pushed him fiercely. A teacher saw what happened and ran over to them. Hey hey what's the problem here he asked. This boy tried to skip me and I wouldn't let him. I was right here first. She lying the boy shouted loudly turning a few heads. Another girl Another third grade girl turned around and told the man that Zoe had been right behind her fast. The other kid got sent to the back of the line. Zoe tapped the girl on the back so she could turn around. Zoe was shocked as she hadn't looked at her so closely in the heat of what happened. The girl was light-skinned with two ponytails with very pretty natural hair. Zoe noticed the discoloration of her neck that looked just like her own. There was another spot in her hair and then ran down to lower her arms and hands. She wore glasses and had braces with, with pink rubber bands. Thank you for sticking up for me. The girl replied, You're welcome. He shouldn't have been trying to skip you. If he wanna get to the front, he needs to get here faster. Zoe got beside her to keep talking. I'm new here and yesterday was rough. It been looking at me like I'm from outer space. I'm Eliza, but you can call me Zoha. Oh, never bow. That's her. That's her introduction every time. The girl smiled before saying her name was Lisa. She also asked Zoe if she wanted to sit with her. Eliza happily agreed to join Lisa for breakfast, which made her feel good. Uh, maybe. Uh, Lisa is going to be the fast friend she makes. But I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure um, Lisa is going to be the fast one. Let's see. They sat 
done where they stared at each other. One. They stared at one another for a moment, so broke the silence. I never thought in a million years I would see someone that looks like me in real life. Me neither, Lisa responded with an exhale, so chuckled a little. While we were walking to the table, I watched you. Your head was up high, you were brave, and you didn't look scared at all. How do you do that? People are mean sometimes, so sometimes you can be as nice as you want to them, but they will still be rude. If they aren't afraid to be that way, why should I be afraid to be me? Lisa said. That's really good advice. Checking in. <laughs> Babe girl, I know Daddy Baby not frozen. I thought I was going to have a heart attack yesterday. My family tells me to be confident all the time, but it's not. But it's so hard not to be hard by the way people look at me, just staring at me like I'm not a person. People don't stare at you. My counselor said if someone is staring at me like I'm anything less than beautiful, then that's their problem, not mine. She helped me get over how bad I felt about me. My daddy says that, so I replied. Lisa countered. He's right. I'm very happy at school now. I learned that some people will like me and some will not. But just because people don't like me doesn't mean I'm not a good person. Mrs. Dutch is my counselor. She is your friend at school that you can tell. She's your friend at school that you can tell all your secrets to. I'll take you to meet her. How didn't I see you yesterday? So I asked with her help. With her help. With her head tilted. I wasn't at school yesterday, Lisa laughed and continued. I'm in Mr. Perry's class. I'm in Mrs. Parker's class. Those kids are rough, said so. They shared a smile as Lisa told so that the two of them could be friends. There's, I knew it. We're halfway through this book. Yep, halfway through, halfway through. They shared a smile as Lisa told that the two of them could be friends. That made Zoe feel better. For the last bit of breakfast time, they talked about pets, games, and whatever else that great girls talk about. Zoe and Lisa walked to class together after the class bell had rang before splitting up. They would see each other again at PE. Zoe was in a cheerful mood when she sat in her seat, but she noticed a note on her desk. The note read, I haven't forgot what you did yesterday when you made people laugh at me. Her anxiety rose while she read the note and she started to play with her hand. Oh no, I hope Neela doesn't try to fight me. I don't want to get in trouble at school. It's only my second day, Eliza thought to herself. She looked up to catch that surprise glaring at her. Neela was a part of the field. Mrs. Parker grabbed the attention of the class. She mentioned how great some of them had done yesterday and that some of them had work to do, which was okay. Mrs. Parker wasn't a name caller. As time passed, Zoe was glued to the lessons that were being taught. Every so often, she would look around to see what others were doing. Some of them whispered, past notes. That's not really allowed in school, is it? I looked around. What if those notes were about me? Eliza shook herself from the bad thoughts and saw Neela looking at her. A while later, the bell rang for the third grade classes to attend P.E. Yeah, new friends. Yep. You got a new follower. Thank you so much, Mem Autism. I'll hang and chill with you. Thanks, Bennett Vickman. I'm I'm just really proud of so. I'm really proud of so. She made her first friend. Yeah, yeah. Do you smell that? Uh, I don't smell anything.
but you probably do because, well, I'm not really there. <laughs> but no, I don't really smell anything here. Hmm. Once the students made it to the gym, Lisa and Zoe found each other in the large scramble. The two picked up where they left off at breakfast early in the day. They sat off to the side where Zoe had stretched the day before. Oh, what kind of ice cream do you like? Cookie dough. Mm. What kind do you like? Cookies and cream, the best I can eat all day, Lisa shouted. What do you like to do for fun, Zoe wondered. Well, I love puzzles, TV, to be outside playing. Ah, uh, I like to draw and I like to sing even though I can't that good. Oh, and I'm no good at spots, Lisa laughed at herself. Before the conversation continued, Neela walked up to them. You thought it was funny yesterday, Neela said with an attitude. She had three of her friends behind her. Shelly was tall with a skinny frame, dark skin and a ponytail. Katie was short and chubby with light brown skin. Carla? Carla wore glasses with a mixed skin tone and hazel eyes. She was just about Zoza's eyes. No, I don't think it was funny, Zoe said calmly as she rose to her feet. You were really rude to me yesterday and it hurt my feelings in front of everyone. She finished. I don't care, Neela snapped, which caught some of the other kids' attention. She got closer to Zoe as a small cloud inch closer. Lisa stepped in between them, but Zoe wasn't backing down. Nobody likes a bully and you don't scare me. Just because you don't like me doesn't mean you need to try and make everybody else, everyone else not like me too. Zoe said boldly. Lisa butted in to defend Zoe. Leave her alone. She hasn't done anything for you to not like her. Carla pitched in. Lisa, this ain't got nothing to do with you. Lisa came back. Go on, so we don't fight. My counselor says we don't have to fight anyone just because they're mean. The two of them walked away to find Max to use. While they set up their Max, Lisa smiled at Zoe. You did so good, Lisa said, laying out her mat. Cookie dough. <laughs> This will make a great illustrated book. I know, but I more like the books without illustrations because then you can picture what the, what they would look like. Like you can, like you can use your imagination and make them in your mind. I, I just hate it when I see a picture of a really good book I read because it's like nothing I imagined when I read the book. So start to stretch as Lisa sat down in front of her. Now teach me how to stretch the most I want, the most I do when I'm getting out of the bed. The most I do is when I'm getting out of the bed. She laughed loudly. They finished out PE, catching glances from all the kids that saw what happened earlier. On the way back to class, they laughed and joked until they parted ways till lunch. Lisa seems like a really great person. And she is just like so. Or Joe. Mrs. Parker flew through the math lesson before she got to Eliza's favorite subject. She loved history. What did I miss? Uh, not too much. Well, we're reading how Zoe made friends and she just made friends with a new girl, Lisa, who has in the same condition she has. But she also has an enemy now because um, there's another girl named Neela who seems so nice at first. And I thought she was going to be Zoe's best friend. Her parents always taught her things about true history compared to what old books said. 
Who knows who Christopher Columbus is? Mrs. Parker asked as she surveyed the room. A boy named Ryan blurted out, He discovered America. Zoe raised her hand but quickly sat it down. That made her more obvious. Do you know Zoe? she asked. That ran so laughed before saying, Never mind. Her teacher wanted to hear what she had to say, so she asked again. Nervously, Eliza answered, Well, my daddy said Christopher Columbus didn't discover America. What did your daddy say? Mrs. Parker asked curiously. Indians were already here. You can't discover a place that already has people. He said you can't tell us that. Her teacher took a second to answer, but she asked Zoe to hang back a little while at lunch. Zoe sunk into her seat while the rest of her class let out a wave of oohs. He's probably wrong and Mrs. Parker doesn't want to make her cry, he listened mockingly. She heard a chuckle from a few kids. The lesson went on and Zoe didn't say anything else. The bell rang for lunch and kids rushed to line up at the door. Today was pizza day. The kids were shoving for a spot in the front and some were asking others, You want your pizza? Zoe remained in her seat. Go outside the door and stay in a straight line quietly or there will be no snack for the next week, Mrs. Parker said firmly. All of them listened without a peep. So approached the desk with a concerned look. Mrs. Parker broke her throat. Why do you look so nervous, sweetie? I thought I was going to get in trouble for what I said. Oh no, sweetheart, you were actually right, and I have to teach what the book says. Never to be afraid to say what's on your mind. Nobody is always right, but you never know if you don't say nothing. The two of them walked out of the classroom towards the cafeteria. Lisa was waiting for her by the double doors of the cafeteria. They got in line looking to see where they would sit. The seats were getting more and more full since they were later than the others. Moments later, the two of them got their food and looked around for two seats. What seemed like the only two seats left were right beside Neela. Uh oh. Oh no, I don't want to sit by her. Lisa noticed her friend's nervous gaze and broke her thoughts. Come on, Zoe, my other friend is over there too. He's always been nice to me, Lisa said with a comforting voice. Zoe agreed to the seats and walked to the table behind Lisa. I'll sit by Neela, you go on the other side, Lisa whispered to Joe. They sat down and Zoe said on her plate, Lisa spoke to her friend that was sitting next to Zoe. Hey Paige, Lisa said with a smile. Paige answered with a grin. Hey Lisa, how come you weren't at school yesterday? Oh, I had to. Paige, we don't talk to them. Paige hesitated. She had been friends with Neela forever. I don't want to choose between friends. How come we all just can't get along? Paige thought. Nobody can make me not like anyone. Paige broke her silence with three sets of eyes on her. Well, I talked to her. Lisa is my friend too. But look at her skin. Are you going to pick her over your best friend? You come to my house all the time. Just because we're friends doesn't mean I can't be anyone else's friend. Lisa's always nice and fun, Paige said as she looked at Lisa and so. Paige said as she looked at Lisa and so, Eliza was in awe that Paige was standing up against her own friend for someone else. Well, you're gonna have to choose because I don't want to be friends with Lisa or so, Neela said with an attitude. There was no backing down in her eyes. Then I'm not gonna be your friend anymore if you think I can't be friends with other people, Paige said with shock, Neela. It's not just other people, just them. It's not other people, just them. Whatever, I have other friends anyways. Neela rolled her eyes. Paige finally told her 
that she would talk to Lisa and Zoe while she wanted. Zoe admired that and gained a new friend. Yay! She's gaining new friends. If the three of them started talking about playground games, cartoons, and whatever else they enjoyed. As they blew through the subject, so could tell Neela wanted to get in on the talk. She looked so sad now. The lunch bell sounded and it was time to go back to class. While they were walking back to class, Lisa saw Miss Dutch and shouted, Miss Dutch! Miss Dutch turned her head to see Lisa waving. She approached the now three friends to say hello. You already know me and Paige. This is Zoe, Lisa said excitedly. Well, hello, Zoe, she said with a smile. What's your real name? So smiled, Eliza Jones, but you can call me Zoe or Joe, never both. Mrs. Dutch had brown skin with a natural curl in her hair. She has really nice teeth, so dot. I got it, Zoe or Joe. You can come by my office whenever you need to talk about anything. I'm always here for you. Thank you, Zoe replied with a sincere face. Ah. Hello, how have you been? Hello, Twitter V Tonsolo. I've been good. What about you? Back to watch you more. I'm glad to hear that. Hope you enjoy. The three of them got back to class and said their goodbyes until the end of school. Mrs. Parker decided to let them do arts and crafts of their favorite two things as their first class projects. Oh, that's going to be so fun. I wish I could do that. Zoe wanted to do ballet and zen for hers. She pulled out her colored pencils while the teacher passed out different colors of papers. My mama always packs my stuff. She looked around the room trying to brainstorm what to draw. Zoe noticed a boy who didn't have anything. That's terrible. He doesn't have any colored pencils or crayons or nothing. Eliza grabbed a handful of her pencils and walked over to him. The kid was shy, her curly brown hair and light skin. He was a heavier boy. I saw you didn't have nothing to color with. Do you want to use some of my stuff? She held out some colors while he picked some. He smiled and whispered, thank you. What's your name? Kenny, I heard your name on the first day you came, he said. So I walked back to the desk and finished what she was doing. Aw, that's nice. The rest of the day breezed by for her. When it was time to go home, the class lined up at the door. I made it all the way through the day, she thought to herself. They were escorted to the after-school areas based on transportation. There were car riders, walkers, and bus riders. Zoe was a bus rider. She couldn't wait to tell her brother all about her day at school. Two friends in one day. There has to be some kind of third grade record. <laughs> Moments later, the bus pulled up and Zoe got on to look for Zeeland. He was about five rows away from the back. He was looking for her too. Zoe made it to her brother's seat and just smiled at him. Somebody had a good day today, Zeeland said with a laugh. She bounced up and down slightly. I did, Mama, I did. Guess how many friends I made today. How many? He replied. Two, not one, but two. And I let another kid use my colored pencils because he didn't have anything. I think he would be my friend too. Oh, oh, one of my new friends has cookie dough skin like me. What? I never would have thought you would find someone like that your age. That's what I said. She was so nice and helped me stand up for myself against the mean girl from yesterday. I'm so proud of you for being yourself and not backing down, Joe. You fear no one. Being different is what makes you who you are, her brother said with a serious tone. 
Zoe nodded at him, and she asked him about his day. She leaned her head on his arm while he talked about his day at school. Ah. After about six stops, they reached their own for the walk home. She held her brother's hand and couldn't wait to get home. Ooh, the cloud is calling my name. <laughs> she, she just wants to get to bed. I like the stream a lot. Should I follow you? We'd love if you followed us. And I guess it's up to you, but of course. We'd really appreciate it. When they got home, they went their separate ways and changed it out of their school clothes. Ooh, jump. Cute. <laughs> Major League Gaming MLG. They got home, went their separate ways, and changed out of their school clothes. Zoe went outside in the backyard to jump on the trampoline. While she jumped, she thought about everything that happened at school. I can't believe I met someone else like me. How did she get so brave? I would have been scared to take up for me. Just take up for me because I wouldn't want to get talked about. I can't believe Paige stood up to her own friend because it was the right thing to do. I didn't have to pretend to be someone I'm not and made two friends. It's not about how you look after all. Mama and Daddy was right. If you are a good person, you meet good people too. I know I can be brave and stick up for kids like Lisa did for me. Aww. Thirty minutes later, she came in the house to see her parents getting dinner ready. Spaghetti and crescent rolls were on the menu. Mm. They asked her about her day, which she was excited to tell them about. Her parents told her how proud they were of her and reminded her that loving herself for who she is inside was important. When, Z when dinner was over, Zoe got cleaned up and ready for bed. She jumped in her cloud and went to bed. Oh, uh, I see. She jumped in her cloud. <laughs> over the next couple of weeks, everything was going really well for Joe. She still had her two friends, Lisa and Paige, with hopes of meeting more good people. Thank you so much, GamerKVLF, for following. We really appreciate it. We hope you enjoy these dreams. And also, welcome to the channel. Ooh. Diving the... During PE, the upcoming week, there was going to be kickball games. Ooh. There was going to be a tournament between classes until they had a third grade champion. The classes were Mrs. Parker, Mr. Perry, Mr. Jims, Mrs. Johnson. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's see. It was Monday morning. Zoe woke up feeling uneasy. She was already so nervous about the tournament. She hadn't even made it to school yet. Uh oh. What if we lose and it's my fault? They may start to pick on me really hard. Zoe decided to wear pants so she could run as fast as she needed to do it. Zoe decided to wear pants so she could run as fast as she needed to driving kickball. She brushed her teeth, fluffed her ponytail, and met her brother at the door. When she got to school, she went to the cafeteria for breakfast, where she saw Lisa and Paige waiting for her, as they did every day now. Hey doll, did you have a good weekend? Lisa smiled. I was so worried about the tournament that I just kicked the ball for two days practicing. Oh, so kickball is supposed to be fun. I think everyone wants to win, but it's not that big of a deal, Lisa said cheerfully. 
I just don't want to be the reason my class loses. You might stop being mean to me after that. Everyone messes up though, who cares? I haven't been to kickball boot camp. She laughed out loud. That made so laugh too. I guess so, so snickered. A few minutes before it was time for PE, Mrs. Parker called for the class's attention. Ooh. Okay y'all, today we are playing against Mr. Perry's class. If we lose two games, we're out. If we win the whole thing, we'll have a fun free day in class on Friday. Everyone was excited, but Zoe was focused on the game. She was so nervous about messing up. If you're nervous about messing up, then you will mess up. You gotta be not nervous if you don't wanna mess up. Sup, sup, sup. Hi, your mellow board. How are you doing? I'm back. I'm glad to hear you're back, Rubber Ducky Normal. Everyone chatted about how far they were going to kick the ball and how fast they could make the bases. One of the boys tapped Zoe on the arm. Are you fast? He asked with a curious look. The boy was dark skinned with a small afro. She didn't know his name. I think I'm pretty fast, Zoe so replied to him. I was just asking. We got some kids that don't run that fast. The fast kids got to score the points. He said with a slight grin. So nodded at him and turned around. So he found out his name was Andre. When they got to the gym, each class had to stick together. The gym teachers called for their attention to tell them how the games were going to go. Zoe's PE teachers were Mr. Jakes, Mrs. Mack and Mrs. Landry. Mr. Jakes was light brown with a bald head and beard. Mrs. Mack was brown with a long wavy hair and pretty eyes. Miss Landry was white with red hair and nice pretty eyes. I heard my dad talking. Let's see. Since we have two fields, we're going to have two games going down one time. The games are going to last until the end of PE. Whoever is winning is the winner. So I need Mrs. Parker's class and Mr. Perry's class to go outside to field one. The other classes are playing on field two. Zoe watched as the children stormed out of the gym. Lisa walked past walked past Zoe and told her to just have fun playing. She walked out and followed one of the kids she recognized from her class to the field. This was the first week that I had been outside. Miss Landry picked the team captains for each team. For Mr. Perry's class, he told, he told me he wants Robin to be the captain for his team. His class cheered in approval of the decision. They all loved Lupin. For Mrs. Parker's class, she wants so. She didn't say a real name and I don't know everybody's nickname. Which one of you is Zoe? Leela busted out. You can't be serious. Why is she the captain? Why not me or Andre? We're the best in the class. Mrs. Lange responded with a feisty tone. I didn't pick. Mrs. Parker did. So you take that up with her. Zoe is your team's captain. So just stared at the ground and played with her fingers. Going home sounded really good to her. I gotta get out of here. 
Mrs. Landry told so to follow her to the middle of the field for a coin toss. When she started walking, she heard Andrew say, Well, uh, well we're gonna lose now. That made her feel the pressure even more. I'm gonna show them. So got angry. When they got to the middle, she picked tails for the toss. The Reuben won. Mr. Perry's class was fast. Was up to kick fast. Zoe went back to her group to pick out the positions. All right, catch is the best? She asked with a little hesitation. We already know that stuff, Andrew snapped back. A handful of them walked past so while the rest stayed with her. I can catch really good. My name is Venny. I can catch good too. I'm Jasmine. You could call me Jazz. Man, my hands like glow. And man, my hands like hello. I know I can catch. Oh my god, them hands. He laughed. Zola, best catches play in the outfield in case they kick it far and high. The faster people play closer to the front and everybody else just kind of play the middle between the bases. You the, you the captain, we got you, Jasmine said with a serious face. Miss Lanchy blew her whistle for the start of the game. Zoe was the automatic pitcher and she was the captain. She copped back her fast pitch, got a running start, and rolled it fast, and rolled it lightning fast. Zip! Ruben tried to kick it out of the park, but he missed. A wave of oohs and shocked faces went over the field. So took a deep breath and zipped another fast roll. Bam! Ruben kicked the ball in between Zoe and the fast pace. So sprinted as fast as a cheetah to the ball and threw it to fast pace, but Nilo was to get the fast up. So felt less nervous now since the game has started. Okay. okay. Zoe was ready for the next kicker, a tall girl she didn't know. Zoe rolled to another straight ball, but the girl sent it deep in the outfield. Zoe watched the ball soar over her teeth and felt the pressure come back. Oh no! The girl was fast enough to get a home run. Some of the some of those teammates gave her daddy love. The score was one to zero. After a handful of kids came to kick, Zoe's team got three outs. They got the three outs they needed for their turn to kick. She was up fast and she didn't want to be the fast out. Ruben darted a ball and so straight down the middle. Don't miss, don't miss, don't miss. Bing! So kicked the back hard between the second and third. She ran like her life depended on it before she made it to second base. Yes, I did it. Before they got back on the fence, the score was 3-1. Zoe, Renny, and Andre. Andre got runs. The game went by and got intense at the end. The score was 8-7 to seven and Zoe's team was kicking. The bases were loaded and they were losing one by one. Nila was on third. Another kid she didn't know was on second and Omar was on first. Just two runs and we win. Come on Zoe. Zoe was at the plate, ready to bring it home. The fast roll zipped fast and she missed. She took a deep breath and got ready for pitch number two. Whoosh! Joe missed again. No! No! Come on! And she kicked it at an awkward angle. The ball went directly to Lisa at fast pace and she had grounded out. Mrs. Landry. Miss Landry blew the whistle. And the game was over. So started walking towards the building with her head hung low. Dang it, I let everyone down. Jasmine cut into her thoughts. So you played really good. Why are you looking sad? Because it's her fault we lost, Andre something. 
Omar came to Zoe's defense. She is not the reason we lost. She scored two runs today and you got out twice. Stop trying to blame her because you're not the captain. No one was, nobody was talking to you, Omar, Neela shouted. Mr. Dick spat it into the argument and broke it up. He sent everyone back into the gym to get water and cool down before they went back to class. Some of the kids told Zoe how great she did, even though they didn't win. We can still make the championship. It's not your fault. Don't take it so hard. All except a few of her classmates were on her side. When school let out, Zoe was thinking about the game and what happened. Even though most of her classmates spoke positive things, she could only think about the bad stuff. Gotta have fun playing. <laughs> After Zoe got home that afternoon, oh, just 10 more and we're done with the book. She pulled out her match for breeding. The day was definitely not the best. Zoe did 10 minutes of breeding and tried to clear her mind for a bit. Her brain had been crowded all day. When she started to put her mat away, her mother walked into her room to check on her. Hey Doe, I saw you breeding and I didn't want to cut into your time. Hey, Mama. Eliza gave her mother a tight tag and smiled. Any reason you decided to do your Zen today, she asked curiously. Oh, Mama, yes. There's a kickball tournament at school this week. And guess who the captain is? Me. Why me? Some of my teammates don't like me and hate that I'm the captain. I didn't even want to be the captain. My teacher picked me. We almost won the game today, but we lost because I got up. Some of them started playing me for us losing, and it was really stressful. Her eyes watered as she told her mother how she felt. Okay, how did you do during the game? Her mother asked. Joe thought for a second before answering. Well, I had two runs. I got a ground and some strikeouts. Were you a team player? Of course, you and old daddy always say that there's no I in team. That's true. That's right. Did everyone blame you or just a few of them? Just some of them, especially that one girl who doesn't like me. Zoe's mother paused for a moment. Okay, let's get this straight. You got picked to be team captain but didn't volunteer for it. They got mad at you because you got picked and you played a great game and almost won the game. But since you lost, it was all your fault. Yes, so replied and waited for her mama to keep talking. Here comes the climax. Huh, maybe it is. When the team wins, everyone wins. When the team loses, everybody loses. So, you didn't lose the game. The team lost the game together. I'm sure you're not the only one that made a mistake or got out. Sounds like most of the people on your team liked the way you played and thought you did great. Don't waste your time worrying about what the negative people say. How do I be a team captain? So said it with a tilted head. How do I be a team captain? So said it with a tilted head. So's mother took a second to think before she answered. Well, a team captain and leader motivates their team to do the best that they can. Captains lead by example, because if you play hard, they will most likely play hard too. Tell them when they do good, but say something positive when they do, when they do not so good. Stop worrying so much though, and just relax. Be confident and be yourself. So didn't say anything back. She just threw her head in her mama's lap. She thought about what her mother had just said. So thought it made sense and that she was right. Her mother left the room and she got in the tub to be clean for dinner later on. Until dinner was ready, so did some cartoon drawing and crosswords. Her favorite cartoon was Fairly Odd Parents. She loved Cosmo more than anyone else on the show. Yes, ignore the trolls. <laughs> yep.
So juice for this team game. Yep, team game. Eight more. That night, the family ate homemade burgers and fries, one of Zoe's favorite meals. Mmm, sounds good. When dinner was over and the family finished talking about everyone's day, it was time for bed. Zoe said her good nights, brushed her teeth, leapt into her cloud, and went to sleep. Today was game number two, and they were playing against Miss Johnson's class. They had lost yesterday, too. Before the game, Zoe gave her team a pep talk. Today is a new day and a new game. We're gonna go out there and play our best. Win or lose, we're still winners if we give it all we got. Let's go get them! They all stormed out onto the field, ready to battle. Zoe's team won the coin toss and she chose to kick fast. Zoe was the fast to kick as she was as she was yesterday being the captain. A girl named Sophia was a pitcher for Mrs. Jo- for Miss Johnson's team. She zipped a pitch far she zipped a pitch far to the right. Ball! Miss Lunge shouted. Sophia ripped another one that carved to the right. Ball! Miss Lunge yelled again. The card ball came and bing! So good a fast base kick to the get the game to get the game started. An hour went past and the kids were all over the place giving it all they had. But every mistake the team made, so said positive things to make them smile. The game was full of that's okay, we'll get it next time. We'll mess up sometimes. She even said cheerful things to Neela, who looked surprised. The game was coming down to a close. And Zoe was Zoe was on hard base. It was Mosey's turn to kick and Zoe was nervous. This can't happen again. I have to score. We have to win. Bring me home, Mosey. Zoe yelled out. Sophia rolled a lightning fast pitch that Mosey barely kicked towards Todd. The ball was thrown home. Well, so was in full stride. Pickle! She screamed in her head. Come on, so. She turned back towards Star, keeping her eyes on the ball. The catcher threw the ball over her head and came over her head again, back to the boy on her. She turned around again towards home. I'm getting tired. The ball flew back to the catcher. So faked a big step like she was going back to Tar. The catcher tossed the ball, but she was already on her way past him. Safe! Miss Landry screamed, and Zoe's team was in a frenzy. Yes, yes! She was out of breath from running back and forth. The whole class was cheering, except a few who had walked away. Doe tried to catch her breath. We did it! We won! Everybody did good. Zoe had earned her spot amongst most of her classmates. Most of them accepted her, and as they got a chance to see her for the great person she was, she went home and told her family about the game. Jo also told them how she became friends with almost all of her class. I just had to get to know her and give her a chance. Safe, yeah. <laughs> Progress. I love course ones too. Me too. I'll see you later. Okay, you are well, Zaki. Hope to see you soon. She went home and told her family about the game. Jo also told them how she had become friends with almost all of her class. They just had to get to know her and give her a chance. She didn't leave out a single detail and was very proud of herself. So had a great day and broke her two friends in a one day record. One day record. The hard game was against Mr. Jim's class to make it to the championship game. That was an easy win for Zoe's team. The next morning, Zoe went into the cafeteria where Lisa was waiting as always. Kids were walking past them, speaking to Zoe while they were in line. 
I even can't stop wanting her class was saying, Hey, so. Wow, this is weird. Joy, you've made some more friends, Lisa said joyfully. I know, I don't think these kids were ever gonna like me, so replied with a little relief. Well, even if they didn't, that would be okay. Being you made people like you. Just had to give it some time. Other kids are weird. They shared a laugh, got some breakfast, and turned the table. A PE teacher gave them the day off class day, so they could have the championship game on Friday. I can't believe we're playing against each other in the championship game, Lisa said with a laugh. I know. I knew y'all were going to make it after we played the first game. You're really fast, so so responded. Maybe it's the skin that makes me look like a blur when I run, Lisa laughed. Zoe chuckled and asked, Where's Paige? Lisa shrugged her shoulders and said, I don't know, I think she's sick. Jumps are no go for Zoe, Zoe replied with a smack. <laughs> the bell rang for class and they walked back to class before spitting into their classes before splitting into their classes. School breeze because Zoe didn't feel so scared and alone. Oh, only a little bit left. It was a championship Friday. The showdown had arrived. Mrs. Parker's class against Mr. Perry's class and it was going to be one to remember. Everyone was going to be watching the game. I have to remember to plead. It's supposed to be fun. So gave her team a pep talk and even Andre came around to listen to the participate to participate in the chance. So went to the middle of the field for the coin toss where Ruben already stood. I like you, Zo, but we win in this championship today, Ruben said as he held out his hand to speak. We'll see, Ru. Don't be mad at me after we win, so replied with a slight grin. Ruben won the toss and chose for his team to kick fast. So got on the mound and took a deep run. She fired the ball slightly to the left that Ruben kicked out and missed. So rolled another one with the same speed. Bam! Ruben kicked the ball way into the outfield. Over everyone's heads. He got a home run to start the game. Don't lose this game for us, so Neela shouted. Just ignore her, so you got this. After that, kids were getting out left and out right for both teams. Time was running out, and the score was only one to zero. Neela was on second base, and Andre was up to kick. They only had one out so far. Andre kicked his pitch close to second. So scream, stay at your base, Neela. Neela ran anyway and got out. She stomped off the field back to the sideline reserve. Don't tell me what to do. I don't listen. I don't have to listen to you, Neela. Snap. So backed back. I'm only trying to help us win. I didn't get us here, neither do you. I don't know why everyone else likes me and you don't. It must be how I look because it's not because I'm not a good person. But you know what? I don't care what you think because I'm beautiful and that's all that matters. So excuse me, it's my turn. <laughs> I told her. She doesn't like me. That's okay. Zoe was boiling hot but confident. Ruben rolled a pitch with a spin on it and Zoe missed. Calm down, calm down. He threw another. Boom! She sent the ball flying to the left to left field to get a home run. The score was now 2-1. to one. Mia and Tristan got their last two outs and all that had to do was keep Ruben's team from scoring. Ruben came to the plate and left and pointed to the outfield like he had another home run coming. So put some heat on her pitches and she, and he only got a double. Lisa kicked her fast pitch to second base where Neela was. He 
Lisa kicked her fast pitch to second where Nela was. Throw it to Todd! So said so they could get the lead runner. She threw it to fast instead, which made the rest of the team furious. Nela, you're gonna make us lose, Andre shouted. Nela looked shocked because he was always on her side against so. Yeah, just listen to Zoe. It's not about you, Jasmine's voice loud. Jasmine voiced loudly. I have to strike out the next three. I don't want them to tie the game. Zoe struck out the next two kickers, but the Todd boy had a photo steal. He kicked a home run every time he came to the plate. Oh no! Zoe started at. So started staring at him while it seemed like everyone else was frozen. She threw a pitch with a spin on and he kicked it with the side of his foot like to her. She scooped the ball off the ground as Ruben darted to home plate. Get him, so Come on, so was what she had as she got into rowing distance. She launched the ball on his legs. Bam! The ball hit his knees one step before the plate. Out, Mr. Jake swallowed. Zoe and her team all huddled together in tears as they just won the Card Grey Kickball Championship. Zoe, Zoe, Zoe. The chants were nuts from the sidelines and her fellow classmates around her. In the midst of all the chants, Leela walked up to Zoe and apologized for being so mean to her for no reason. The secret was that she thought Zoe was really cool and didn't want her to be cooler than her. They shook hands and posed for the picture that Mrs. Parker was taking for the yearbook. When Zoe got home that afternoon, she told her family about how her team won the tournament and she made a ton of friends. When they asked her how she did it, she told them she had to learn to be herself. No way, Ruben. That was a great book. Okay. I'll just... Um... Okay. How Zoe Made Friends. This book is by Jaron Stanton and it is How Zoe Made Friends. I think that the book was really funny and it's just having a great message. Yeah, mission book complete. <laughs> mission book complete. The message is that you should be yourself no matter what other people think. And there's always going to be somebody out there who just understands you and accepts you for being you. Mostly the book took place in her sc at her school, but a few times it was at home where she practiced her reading Zen. At the beginning of the book, she was really nervous about going to school. At the middle, well, she hated it. But then she met some friends, Paige and Lisa. And it was just like so cool how Lisa just had the same condition as her. And that, well, you know, they were at the same school as well, and they met each other, and they were like almost the same age. Actually, no, they were the same age. <laughs> so, main characters, well, <laughs> it was kind of everybody, mostly Lisa, definitely Zoe. She was like the main main character and her family. The main 
The climax was probably when they lost the first match of the game. But then she, like, she gave a really good pep talk and encouraged her team to do as best as they could. And they won the second game. And then again, she encouraged her team to do the best that they could. And they won the championship. And well, then she became like, friends with everybody even some kids that she had no idea who they were <laughs> this book it sort of takes a while to read maybe it would be like I don't know Good idea for maybe a fourth, sixth, seventh, you know, oh, okay, four, five, four, sixth grader to read. I think it's like around that level and above when it comes to reading it. I really recommend this book because it teaches us to just be calm, stand up for yourself, and just also, and just be yourself no matter what. Also, there's this. This is another message. Dear Vida, you are all of these things. Beautiful, strong, smart, free, and a great person. If people don't love you for who you are, that's okay. I thought it was a really good book. I give it a rating of um, 10 out of 10. Yo! Hi Anna Despick. I'm sorry about that, but how are you doing?